6.30, let's call this to order. Um, we're going to discuss the changes that we made at the last meeting. Um, Tom had redrafted that up for us and sent that out. So we've all had a chance to look at that. Um, I did get an email today about a few other changes. And if I can figure that out, I will bring that up. Um, but in the meantime, why don't we start with uh, Sandy and your thoughts on those changes and kind of where you see things going from here. Um, I think the changes were good. Um, I would like to see the capitaliz capitalization inconsistencies cleaned up um, and maybe using bullet points instead of just running things together like under essential duties and responsibilities, um, E, instead of just running that, you, you could actually do like develop and maintain sound and efficient office management procedures for presentation approval by select board, which include, but not, lim are not limited to, and then compiling and updating a procedure manual, personnel policies, job descriptions, permanent employee screening, professional development, evaluations, recommendations for hiring, recommendations for discipline and or firing to select board um, negotiations. A lot of the other things that we hit later on, we could all put in a bullet point under that E. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds good. You know, Sandy, I was having a hard time following you as I was looking at my budget information for my school. So give me a moment to catch up here. I was looking at the wrong stuff altogether. So what section were you in? I'm sorry. Um, under administrate essential duties and responsibilities. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, and it was letter E, especially. Um, yes. Where you can just, you could just lump so many of the others things under there mm. in the bullet points and it just to be easier to see and know what you're doing if you're the person applying or if, if you're the board and you're evaluating um, and from that you could make out your evaluation form sure so that's pretty much much like putting the things in in um, letter N into that one, right? Right. Yeah. Right. See, I'm going to interrupt here for a second. Jeff, you have missed absolutely nothing um, other Thanks. than San Sandy has requested. <laughs> well, uh, on the on the first page uh, <laughs> under essential duties and responsibilities, uh, Sandy has asked under letter E that some of that go into like a drop down bullet point type thing. So at that, you are all caught up. All right, thank you. Yep. So Sandy, uh, did you have anything else there? Um, sometimes like, like provide administrative support to town departments. Maybe we should add when requested. You know, maybe some departments don't want the administrative support. Jean? Um, okay, so K in that same section right. looks like it was going to be deleted, but I think we were just going to delete supervise. Yes. Somebody's got to right. coordinate that stuff. <laughs> Um, what else did I have? I also had noted, like in the last meeting, if more should be addressed, like you know, that they'd be required to attend all select board meetings, um, take care of the select board correspondences, and um make sure anything that we've asked to be done gets done. And I have a different way of wording that, but a lot of, I don't know, that's a lot of the duties that go on. 
Right. And I can, I can kind of write that out and send it to Tom. Yeah, I think um, well, as far as with where you're headed with the information and stuff, the the packets and all of those things need to be, somebody's going to be or I, I thought of that, but then we talked about having a secretary doing that part. So I said, okay, maybe that doesn't need to be in there now because this, we're also talking to drop in the hours on this position. So I said, that, yep. not their job anymore. And the thing that I felt was lacking when I read this was the grant writing, See, the, the researching and grant writing, which also could go under qualifications like knowledge and experience and grant seeking and grant writing. Um, that and somewhere in the duties. Under financial, it said research and present findings on grant opportunities. Oh, right. there it is. Okay. Because that's important. Yes. Okay. I, I missed that there, but probably qualifications, maybe it could get mentioned in there too. Yeah. You may want to put it right in your advertisement as well, of course. So people know right up front when you're advertising for the position that that's a big piece of it. Right. Right. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, Michael? Nothing else to add. Jeff? Um, I'm satisfied with what we've got so far. Okay. Um, so I had sent this out to um tim and seth cindy and david and just asked for some feedback from them um the only one that i got any feedback from was our treasurer um and so i'll go down i told her that i was going to read this this evening so um under administration letter f um, provide the select board with information for the town's annual report. Uh, she is saying here, information in the town report is provided by the treasurer's office, department heads, and committees. Um, so the town report is put together by the administration, but the information. So I'm not sure if she's asking that that be removed or amended. Does that make sense to anybody? Maybe amended. Okay. Maybe collect the information to present. Yeah, I, I agree, Sandy. I mean, somebody still has to be responsible for rounding up all the information and uh, sometimes hounding people that are responsible to uh, get information in for the report. Okay. So how do we think that should be worded there? Provide. Um, gather gather information to present to the select board for the town's annual report. Yeah. Tom, did you get that? He's got his mic turned off. Gather information to pre prepare uh, to present. To, to select board for annual report. All right. Is that close enough? Yep. Okay. I think so. um, under knowledge and skills and abilities, point number four, that looks like, um, wait a minute. Oh. Um, possess a positive attitude and be an effective team member able to manage and resolve conflict and to direct and supervise staff as needed. Um, the supervise word is a cause of contention there and I'm not sure how anybody else feels about that. Yeah, that's, I can see that that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, but will this person oversee the sec the administrative assistant or the secretary that comes in under maybe you can delineate just that person 
Well, you got as directed by the select board. So if we just tell her, him, to supervise, you know, the secretary, that's as directed. As directed by, okay. Well, yeah, because, yeah, well, I, that would be fine, but that piece is missing. So right. um, direct and supervise staff as directed by the select, but that sounds funny to me. What are we missing there? So conflict and... Is a, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, is that last part even necessary? Maybe not. The, the and to direct and supervise staff is needed. Does that have to be in there somewhere? I don't really see, I think you're kind of talking about two different aspects. You know, the possessed positive attitude, conflict, blah, blah, blah. And to direct and supervise staff is needed to either, I don't know, I, either that should be a separate bullet point or just plain deleted from the whole section. I would agree with taking it out of there as long as the other stuff remains. Um, because yeah. somewhere in there, it's also, uh, and maybe it's not in here. No, it's good. Well, it's yeah, I mean, it, it's not really a, a knowledge, skills, or abilities. It doesn't fit into, to me, under any of those three. Um, to me, it's more of a responsibility or I, I just don't see direct and supervise anywhere under those three categories. And when you have provided administrative support to town departments from the crest or whatever, that kind of covers that. Yeah. Hmm. The only thing somewhere on here, should it clearly state that there is, um, you know, kind of what we were talking about at the end of that, as directed by the select board. Should there be something else in here that says that, you know, this is kind of what we want of you, but there's always more that could be asked of you? And am I missing that in here? And other duties as assigned? Yeah, you should always put that into any job description. Right. <laughs> yeah. Don't I know it? Uh, yeah. Um, so the next thing she uh, was just pointing out to us that if we dropped it to 29 hours, uh, we would reduce the cost of medical and dental insurance. So from 32 to 29, I'm not sure that I, um, I understand what she's saying. I'm not sure that I agree with offering 29 hours and expecting to get any, anybody that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Under 30 don't provide benefits. Right. Um, I think town policy is 32 hours to get those benefits. Right. Um, oh, so it would just be, well, I, she's specifically said 29 hours here, so I'm not sure. Um, either way, I don't think that we would get anybody that, um, I don't think we would get what we want at 29 hours. Thank right. You. Agree. Um, so we appreciate Cindy's feedback on that. But um, and then she says, I think there should be wording that the person needs to be accountable for hours they are paid for, both in and out of the office. And I know that this has come up previously, and I know that there was mixed feelings on this. So uh, I'm raising that question. And Jeff, I'll start with you on your thoughts there. I mean, uh, I think everybody should be. I don't think we need to single out one employee to be accountable. I mean, I, I think I, I think I understand where she's coming from, but uh, that should be unsaid for every employee to be accountable. And yep. I mean, by accountable, does that mean that the person has to list every everything they're doing every five minutes? No, what what our town policy right now is is that you know you could put in the hours that you're like at your workstation in your office, but if you're gone from there, you need to indicate those hours and where you were. Does, so it's uh, not 
detail of what you're actually doing. It's just when you're not in the office, you have to show why you weren't in the office. Wouldn't that just be to the select board? This week, I, you know, maybe you get a weekly report from the administrator saying this week I, uh, I anticipate, I used to have a form that I'd fill out. I anticipate I got to go to the county. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I'll be out of the office for that. But she, the, the administrator is not accountable to the treasurer. No. The administrator is um, accountable to the board of selectmen. Well, but it's a personnel policy. So that's why it ends up on the timesheets. So uh, did, uh, but did, but does every town employee, do so, they so, list where they are? Exactly. I don't believe, I don't believe the growth crew different. does. And I think that's yeah. where it became a cause of contention previously was that we were singling one person out when that was, so it, it wasn't fair across the board. Um, so yes, I think that everybody needs to be accountable, but we also need to make sure that we're tightening up that same accountability on everybody or that we're expecting that same accountability from everybody. And I don't think that everybody is doing that. Um, and that's not to say that anybody's trying to pull a fast one. I just don't think that it's ever been anything that was enforced. I think a lot of, you know, Sandy had mentioned that we've been through multiple payroll systems that have never been used. And uh, there's always an attempt to try and put something in place, but then there's, it never carries out. So I see what you're both saying. And, and Jeff, I agree that everybody needs to be accountable. Gene, I understand uh, what your explanation there is, but we need to make sure that that's true for everybody that's in those offices. Um, I mean, that, that would mean that we would be asking Tim to let us know, or well, I guess that does it because he's elected, so that's a terrible. Um, uh, elected officials uh, one. Right, right. There's still, you know, I, but even the elected officials function under the town poli employee policies. So, um, I mean, and so he, if that was the case, then usually, we, you know, he does note when he's gone, you know, spent a day at a, a training or a meeting or such. That is on his timesheet. That makes sense. But if you just run into Brattleboro to go to a commission meeting for two hours, I, I don't know. That's what you're hiring a professional person to do. Do you have David write down on his time card if he's running up to the auto body shop to pick up parts you know to work on a vehicle you know well it, that's what we're saying tom you know. is that 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 is the way that the policy is written that yes they should be filling that out on their time sheet but they're not so it would need to be it, it needs to be fair across the board Sandy? I think you need to document it someplace. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure on the timesheet. Uh, maybe you have a diary or something because Tim's going to get a call to run down to, to the nursing home to notarize something. Should he put down on his timesheet, I was gone from, you know, 9 to 1030 notarizing something. Well, that's part of his job. You know, right. he's to be expected. Um, I, I almost think we're straining at a gnat here. Um. Well, I think, you know, the problem arose because we never knew where the previous town administrator was. And there was just a lot of empty office time. So, you know, and the other employees see that, the, the, the residents see it when they come to try to speak to someone, so, and none of us could justify what was going on, so we didn't know. Yeah. So, like, maybe a diary would be helpful. But isn't this as easy as just putting in here that you are accountable to the select board for everything that's in this document? which would include your town's personnel policy. I mean, that kind of covers us, doesn't it? By saying that 
you're held accountable to or by the select board and I don't know. And maybe you're accountable to the select board and not to a lot of other, I remember Sally saying, you know, she would go to the bank and to do the town deposit. And if she stopped to get a gallon of milk, she felt guilty because someone's going to see her in the grocery store getting a gallon of milk on time, time, town time. It's kind of like really pushing it. So I know what she means because I've felt the same way. <laughs> I bet you have. I bet you have. <laughs> yeah. You know you do. We, we used like, to have a common sense approach where the no employees such thing anymore. Me, I know. Yeah. You know, I want to stop at X to pick up an order that's coming in, and I'd say that's okay. But if you're stopping at X to do your Christmas shopping for the afternoon, that's not okay. You know. <laughs> um, right. Right. <laughs> Right. I think we need to, to trust and to, uh, if someone comes to us and says, okay, Jean Carr is supposed to be in the library, you know, for all these hours, and I know that she was at Brown and Roberts. I think we need to say, if she was at Brown and Roberts, she had a reason to be there. Now, if she does it every week, we might want to check and see if she's doing another job up there. But, um, <laughs> I think we need to we need to start trusting and giving the the town residents the idea that we're on top of things, but we do trust. And if you break the trust, that, that's bad. Yeah. You know, but it's it, it's like like with a kid. If if you plan on them doing something bad, they will. I don't know. So because that's in the town policy and, and they were the uh, personnel policy, they would be given that at the time of employment anyway. So it doesn't need to be listed in this. It's right. just part of the town policy and we have that to fall back on at any time, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, one would think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've been wrong before, haven't we? <laughs> it worked uh, for me before. Let's put it that way. <laughs> all right. So is everybody all right with uh of course after tom types these up but the few changes that we've made in addition to the changes that we made last time everybody's feeling like we're in a decent spot and probably yeah. time to start looking towards the next chapter of this search which would be what uh, are we reaching out to vlct um tom did you reach out to them at all i thought we were going to check with them to find out yeah, I've got a, I've got two emails to Mr. Gunn up there, um, and they've been kind of busy with COVID, so he hasn't gotten back, but I imagine he will. Uh, he, I don't have any messages on my machine that that they've called back, so, but I can check, I can check with them again tomorrow. But I do have two calls into them since our last meeting. So do you? Um, I'm sorry, what? Do you have ideas of other routes to seek out? I think Chris had a really good idea. Um, I think that the board could probably do this themselves. Um, if the board wanted, I could assist. I've done some recruiting. I'm not going to charge you for, re and, and that's not what I mean, but I could help with that. And I do have someone that could do more extensive background checks than just a Corey or a Sorry. Um, you know, Corey really doesn't tell you anything other than they don't have any trouble in Vermont. It doesn't go national. It just really does in the state. Um, but there are some other things. And then, you know, we could, you can do the reference checks. I could certainly help with that. Um, but you probably could do this the advertising is going to be what the advertising is. It's going to cost you whatever the ad is in VLCT. Um, you're going to want to put something in probably the Rutland Herald. Um, you know, maybe the, the Commons or the Reformer. The papers get expensive. I'd put it up on Indeed because that's free. Um, there are ways to, you know, there's some ways to market. 
Um, the other municipal associations, Maine um, is $90. At least the last time we advertised for something with Maine, it was $90. Um, you know, MMA mass may not get much from them and it, they're not expensive either, but probably Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, um, in the, in the local ads, if you want to put something in ICMA, that's going to get a little pricey. And I'm not sure that's in the same, um, given the number of hours and what the salary schedule will be for this. I'm not sure ICMA is a real worthy expenditure. Um, it would be if it was a full-time, you know, 40 hour position at X amount of dollars, but 32 hours a week at $45,000 or whatever it may be. Um, it may not be a good place to put your, your advertising money. But I leave that to you. I think the board could do it themselves. And I, I had mentioned that to Tom previously that I'm just not uh, $6,000 to have somebody else collect resumes for us and send us the cream of the crop then that just seems like an awful lot of money to me. Um, however, I did not go through this the last time, um, but I don't, did, did it go through VLCT last time or was, did they do it? Yeah, yes, it did. It did. Um, I think they got back like 10 candidates for the select board to filter through mm -hmm. and interview. And do you remember how long of a time that was? I, I, I guess I'm just, I wasn't on the board then. All right. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just looking at the calendar and where July is and that we're, call it two months away. So, yeah, pushing it. Um, and, right. and Tom brings up another point that I don't think we ever fully decided um, on the 32 hours and what salary would be for that. Um, and that kind of needs to be hammered out before we <laughs> put an ad out there. So thoughts on that? Um, we have a range for the salary depending on qualifications and experience. Good point, Michael. The, the budget line item is $50,000, I believe. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the figure Tom threw out at 45. Yeah, I'm with you. I would say between yeah. 35 and the max, depending on experience qualifications. Um, so the, the guy up in Grafton's making what, Chris, did you say 26.75 an hour or something like that? Twenty six oh one. Okay, he was getting. I knew. All right, so I'll call it twenty. Thirty two hours a week is what he's at. To get benefits. So the at fifty thousand dollars, that'd be twenty nine fifty an hour. Yeah. So at twenty seven dollars an hour, times thirty two hours a week, times fifty two point two weeks per year, because that's how it averages out. Um the way the the way the payrolls work that's forty five thousand one hundred dollars and eighty cents just in case you needed that but um so if you advertise forty two to forty eight forty five to forty eight depending on experience mm, yeah D, depending on qualifications and experience, yeah. What is that commemorative? Oh, yeah, whatever. Um, at the oh, oh, never mind. We do have that. Okay. So roughly twenty-seven bucks an hour. So yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I was trying to read at the same time. We're between forty-two and forty-eight, or forty-five and forty-eight. Is that what you said, Tom? Right, and that, that's just something the board's got to decide. I think, you, you know, 45 um, for 32 hours is 
about that, 20 that is okay is okay yeah about 2650 an hour 48,000 is about 2830 right. an hour got to remember you're in Vermont now Tom not in the big cities of mass i mean yeah well if you're <laughs> in the big cities of mass it should be paying 70 <laughs> right Ashfield just Ashfield just um, advertised, and that's it's 35 or 37 hours at um, 58 to 63. In Ashfield, is that what yep. you said? Yep. Whoa! Wow. So it it looks like the Grafton salary at the 2601 is coming in at 43 four four seven. So I think that 42 to 48 is, uh, I think we're in there. You're between 26 and $28 a, uh, an hour. Um, and that gives us a little bit of wiggle room as well as the potential uh, candidate. I don't know. Is everybody else all right with that? What does that leave you for uh, administrative uh, secretarial money? Well, that was a separate budget line. Did we okay. scrape that all together or is that still in there? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what we did with that. I believe it's still in there. We didn't expect to have things change. Well, that's right, because we were planning on hiring one and then we said we would hold off until we did this anyway. So we that's still reduce, gonna be in there. We reduced it to 3,000. Right. So at that point is 3,000 um, because Michelle Miller, she was not doing our correspondence and she was not doing our packets. Michelle was doing that. Right. So is $3,000 enough for that position to mm -hmm. expect that added work to be done? And I'm not sure that it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's say 10 hours a week times 13.50 an hour times 13.5 times 10 times 52. 70, uh, that's 7,500 roughly. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a weekly thing. It should be a bi-weekly since we only meet every other week, right? So you want to hire somebody for five hours a week, roughly? I mean, I don't even, when Michelle was here, she was getting $50 a day unless it went over a certain amount of, unless our meeting went for a certain amount of time. Is that correct? Oh, $50 per meeting? I think per that's- Per meeting, like thirteen fifty an hour, to type up the minutes. Um, I'm just not sure that a $3,000 budget leaves enough for that person to do the correspondence and the packets, which we had talked about putting on to the secretary. Well, you know, I would kind of think that the, the town administrator would have to develop like a packet. Right. That would be the person that would be deciding what goes into it. She's doing the correspondence. The secretary would just be making all those copies, getting them into our mailboxes, just that. The you correlation. Know, secretarial. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, I see, visualize that. Or Last, does it make. And I know that we've touched on it before, but does it make more sense to leave that at a 40 hour a week position and they do it all, the town admin, at the $50,000, but they do it all? Thoughts? Uh. I guess I worry about in meetings, sometimes it just being too distracting for the TA to be trying to make yeah, you miss, whatever we're dealing with. Yeah, you miss stuff. Yeah.
Jeff, what do you think? Oh, I guess I could probably see it both ways. I, I understand. I understand the part about missing stuff. Um, but the flip side meetings are recorded. And if there's something that a TA misses, could review the review the uh, video at a later time though. So I, I, I mean, I guess I originally, um, I kind of thought 40 hours and the, the TA would try to take minutes and then you know, do more of the uh, administrative stuff and have 40 hours. So, but I mean, I can, I can, I can see either way. I don't have a problem with 32 hours or 40. Um, I guess if I had to have a preference, I'd say 40 and the TA does the minutes and then what he or she misses, uh, review the video afterwards. Michael, what do you think? I agree with what Jeff's saying. Do we have minute taking as an qualification on there if that is the case no because we had started to plan this around a 32 hour i believe um so we started to skim some of that out of there i don't think it was in there it might have there was something in there in the previous one i believe but and i could be wrong uh, i'm not adamant either way i mean but like i said if i had to have a preference i'd say 40 and doing the minutes and some of the administrative stuff because i think even michelle was uh like she was still recording with her phone for those meetings specifically for in case she missed things if i remember correctly right right sometimes your job description for the ta does include the minutes yep and you know, I, I watch, well, Jeff, you've got experience from your planning commission meetings. Martin sits right there with his computer and he knocks those notes out. Um, I, I can only imagine it's with a lot of abbreviations and things that he would only understand, but he goes back and corrects it into something that's legible for the rest of us. Um, Sandy, yeah, what are your I'll, ideas? I get some minutes out that night even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sandy, what are your thoughts on this? I agree with Jeff and Mike. Um, as far as making the packets up, you they could probably find a high school kid that needs some community service as long as there's no confidential stuff to do the packets. Because that that should take more than if it if the TA has the stuff, the master's ready to go. It shouldn't take hardly any time at all to make those copies and pop them in the boxes. Right. Yeah, like no time. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, because you just you make it copy, so it's each packet's already there, just clipping yeah. together. So if that's the case, then we're gonna scratch everything that we just talked about for the <laughs> forty-two to forty-eight. We'll keep it at our uh, budgeted fifty thousand dollars. We'll keep it at a forty-hour uh, benefited position. And somewhere in there, we just need to um, make sure that we are putting that the minutes and along with the minutes that it says very clearly in there that they need to be out by a certain time. Yeah, right. Follow open meeting law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna have to go in there somewhere. And I wanna make sure that correspondence and packets um, that we really spell that one out so that there is no confusion on that one. Okay. Now what I have, uh, Chris, is prepares, uh, prepares select board meeting packets uh, for, for, you know, for select board meetings. I'm just jotting stuff down here. Um, and assures minutes are um drafted and you can and follows open meeting law 
yeah, posted, yeah, and posted according to Vermont law. Okay. Vermont open meeting law, fine. So everybody's all right with that. And then we don't have to worry about um, a separate secretarial position. Look at us, we just saved $3,000 right off the bat, right there, look at us go. And if we put in 45 to 50,000, so we have, maybe someone's gonna come in at 45. I, I, I hesitate to put the 50,000, that the only figure there, I think we should have up to. I like it, Sandy, 45 to $50,000, dependent on experience, education, whatever. I like it. Is that down, Tom, 45 to 50,000? Yeah, I've got 45 to 50, uh, depending on qualifications and experience. Okay. So I think that we're to a point where we need to decide, are we doing this with VLCT's help or are we going to do this on our own? Sandy? I think we could do it on our own. I think we should still advertise in VLCT News and on their, their board but I think we can do it on our own. Jean? Oh. Well, that sounds good that we could advertise with VLCT without, you know, paying the $6,500. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Oh, that, yeah, we should definitely do that. Jeff? Uh, do it on our own. I'm sorry, Jean, I cut you off. What was that? Definitely do it on our own. Okay. Jeff, your thoughts? Um, gen generally, I'm a big believer in professional assistance and paying for it. Um, I I think we probably could do it ourselves. I mean, uh, Tom would be of uh, great assistance, I'm sure. Um, advertising, I think it definitely should be very focused and uh, not just I don't know, just put it in the local paper, um, but uh, you know the most cost-effective and most fo focused advertising possible. Um, well, I don't know. I, I I guess if you know, like I said, I'm a big proponent of professional assistance, and I would spend the money, but if everybody else feels comfortable and us doing this ourselves, then I'm fine with that. It'll, it'll save a little bit of money too. Michael. I agree with the not spending on a VLTC. I think we can make some calls to the BDC and department of labor and see if there's anything they can do to help as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the BDC has really been, um, almost itching to help Vernon, but at the same time, they obviously want things from us in return. But I think that uh, if we did reach out to them for this, that it, it, that could prove to be the start of a great relationship between Vernon and, um, and that organization as well, that we may see some extra support that we didn't have. It's a different setting. It's a different group. It's uh, I, I think that I'm, I'm glad that Michael brought that up. I hadn't even thought of that. And I think that that is, uh, would be beneficial to us. So, um, so it sounds like we're okay to go ahead and, and do this on our own. I think that the five of us have a, a clear idea of what we're looking for, what worked, what didn't work previously. Um, we've heard the comments and the concerns from the town employees and I think that every one of us has taken those to heart and really taken those into consideration. So I think that we're in probably the best place that we could be to move forward and do this on our own. Um, certainly knowing that we have the VLCT there, should we all of us say, hey, this just isn't working out. We've got them there, um, they're not going anywhere. So we have that ability. Um, so let's go ahead and we will still advertise with VLCT, we'll do the Indeed, we'll do whatever the couple of papers. Um, and uh, Michael, do you wanna reach out to the BDC or do you want Tom to reach out to them? Tom probably has more time to do that. If he needs help, let me know, I have lots of contacts there. 
No, I'm in pretty good shape with the BDCC. My question is, I guess, is what can they offer you as far as the recruitment is concerned? We don't know. That's why we're reaching out to them. Okay. I'll, I'll, I can, I'll call Adam. What, um, what and, about, and what about sevens? sevens? Sevens run by the BDCC. I used to be on the professionals. They have a recruitment program that helps bring professionals into the area. I'm not completely knowledgeable on it, but I've heard about it. Yeah, the young <coughs> Good. Um, all right. And then I think that we need to decide on a, I mean, it's what, May 1st is Friday, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I think that we really need this typed up and ready to go into all of those formats by a date but i think it needs to be soon tom what do you think the soonest that can be taken care of is let, let me draft up an ad for you in the morning it won't be that hard to do i will pass it by all of you for wordsmithing um in additions detractions and it, once i get concurrence from the five of you we can put it out um i think you know if you advertise the first week of may through let's say the 21st of May or the 25th of May, depending on when the publications can get them out, the print publications, indeed, you can go up right online. Um, you should be able to have somebody on board uh, interviewed and checked out um, for July 1st. You put a July 1 start date on that and you should be well within a good time frame for that. If you want to move it faster, you could probably push it up two weeks. But it, six weeks, six to seven weeks is generally your turnaround time for advertising, going through the resumes, getting reference checks, getting interviews done. Maybe there's two rounds of interviews that you end up doing. Uh, yeah. You, you know, um, and working through other people's schedules as well. It's, it's, it's six weeks is pretty fast to do that so the 20 the the first is is this friday the 22nd is um the third friday of the fourth friday of the month and then we have our last no i'm sorry our last meeting would be on the 19th wouldn't it so that would put us into the second before we would be able to have, or we would have to hold a special meeting that following week. Um, does I think it we can hold a special meeting because if we're going to want to interview, we don't want the names out. That should all be an executive session. Right, right. I was certainly going to suggest an executive session just to go over the applications that we had. Um, so, Sandy, do you have a, or anybody have a calendar in front of them so that we could look at these dates and decide when we want to have that deadline and when we might all be able to come together in executive session, either at a regular select board meeting or at a special meeting to discuss these things? I've got May and June in front of me. Yeah, I've got, I've got them here. I think we should do it at a special meeting. Okay. Personally. Sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah. Right. So if, if we closed that on the 22nd, which is a Friday, and we had a special meeting on the 27th, which is a Wednesday, um, does that give us enough time to... Hmm. Well, you could perhaps on the 27th be weeding things out correct correct right that's all that's all i wanted that special that original yeah. special meeting was just for us to look at because we're doing this without the recruitment help um right. this that would be our chance to kind of look over everything and try and come up with two piles that we could yeah. then make some decisions on does anybody right. think that that's too ambitious that we need to go further past the 22nd no that's fine no no i think you can do it in that time frame okay, okay. 
Sandy, you all right with that? Yeah. Michael? Yep. All right, so it sounds like we have a plan. We are going to post this position for between forty-five dollars and $50,000 based on experience. Tom's going to draft up the, um, he's going to make the changes to this, and then we will draft up the, um, the actual ad that would run. Yeah, and you will submit that to all, all of us so that you can get an approval on that. I would ask that uh, before we end this, Tom, give us a realistic time when that could be done so that everybody could, uh, could check their emails uh, around that time. Then we will go ahead and post it. We will have a deadline of the um, applications for the 22nd of May. We will hold a special meeting on the 27th and that will be an executive session to to uh, go over the applicants that we have and try and wean those down. Does so that sound right to everybody? My only question is that is um, a Friday and the, the, bu the building's closed on Friday and that is Memorial Day weekend. Oh, oh boy. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> Good point. So if we ended it on the 21st with a special meeting on the 28th, does that work? Yeah, it does for me. Yeah. Every Jeff, you all right with that? Yep. Michael? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, application that changed. Yep. OK. Deadline the 21st, special meeting the 28th. So what, what to, to answer your question, Chris, I should be able to have an ad for your review, for the board's review. I have to meet with, um, I've got two meetings in the morning uh, with Dave Emery. Uh, we're going over stuff for FEMA. Um, I should have this to you before I leave for the day tomorrow. Um, and if you can have it back to me with your edits and suggestions, I can get it, you know, I can get it done over the weekend. It's not heavy lifting um, and have, send it back out to you over the weekend, get a final blessing and get it up online Monday. Sounds great. Okay. Now what I'll do on the 21st, um, when the mail, well, you got to really give it till the end of the day on the 21st or 5 p.m. on the 21st. So it's not, you're not getting something at 11.59 p.m. because uh, mm -hmm. that happens too, if it's yeah. electronic. Um, I'll come in that Friday um, and I will scan them all into one big PDF um, and send them out to you electronically. I will also have hard copies made so that you can, you know, play with them a little bit uh, on Monday or Tuesday of that week. Um, if, if you can come in and pick them up uh, or we can, you know, we can drive them around and deliver them if you want. Yeah, if, if you, uh, whatever we get, if you want to print those off, put them into um, sealed envelopes, I, I would be happy to drop those off for everybody. Okay. Okay, we can do that, um, but, and uh, then when you meet, you'll have them for a couple of days anyways, that you can, you know, read them to yourselves, and then you can come together in, to, uh, on the 28th and figure out, you know, where there's agreement and how, how you want to move forward with interviews. Sounds good. Everybody good with that? Sounds yeah. good. All right, awesome. So I think we've got a, a pretty, <laughs> clear idea of what we want to do um could i ask one more question chris i'm sorry yeah go ahead would it be okay with the board if i asked sandy because um to work with me perhaps after you figure out who you're going to interview on an initial set of questions and reaching out to the board um on what you want to ask because you have to ask everybody the same thing um and then you'll have a list of questions that you can go through when you go through the interviews and that would give you a couple of weeks you know to hone those down to like on grant writing ability or um how do you work with elected staff you know elected elected 
people that are fulfilling major major pieces of the town you know the treasurer and that type of thing um uh, all of the questions that you want to ask we want to get down to be sure that you're not missing anything maybe we should all just send you questions well that's a good way to do it too but yeah. um i'm going to send it to you anyway sandy <laughs> <I know. laughs> that's okay okay <laughs> But we're all gonna we're all gonna have to think of something that someone else didn't think of. So I think we should all put them together. Okay, that's just something to start thinking about because you're gonna want to be ready to go on the 29th. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that 29th would be or the 28th rather, not the 29th, right? Right. Right. Right, Tom, the 28th? Yes. Okay. Well, the, you're going to meet on the 28th, but you're going to want to, my point is, after the 28th, you want to move forward quickly. That's why I said the 29th. Got it. Because you'll have all your people done the 28th. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody have any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Everybody no. good? No. Awesome. I think that we're in a good spot. I'm, I'm looking forward to this uh, as we, as our governor continues that quarter turn, as he likes to say, um, I'm excited for things to start coming back around, for the town to start getting back to where we should be. Um, the, the gray t-shirt thing I think is gonna be a lot of fun for the town. I think we're gonna get a ton of support out of that. Um, I certainly hope I'm not wrong, but I think that people are looking to uh, to get back to it. So if that's kind of the first break of that and gets people headed in that direction, I think that we're in for a, a good couple of months coming up here. So yep. hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. Sandra, I'm going to call you because I may have missed some, some of the things that you were asking early on. I want to make sure I get those into the job description correctly. Okay. okay. Thank you, folks.